All right, after presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. called President Biden a threat to democracy, the ladies of The View were ready to fire back. Where has he been? <laughs> Silence is upon. You think he would know history since well, he Well, one would Kennedy think, family. you would think, but well, go ahead. Does he realize, first of all, he's a threat, I think, more to Biden. Just because of his name, yeah. that people out there, you know, they're not really looking into things. I think they yeah. think, oh, Kennedy, Democrat, yeah, I'll vote for him. Yeah. Even meanwhile, he's a conspiracy theorist. He's anti-science. His whole family is voting for Biden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and this type of dangerous rhetoric that Biden is a bigger threat to democracy than the man who wanted to throw over the government. Joe Conch is a Fox News contributor and he joins us now. Joe, what's the worst part of that comment from Joy Behar? The lies that she told literally throughout that comment or that sense of entitlement to the Democrat vote that so many establishment Democrats like Joy Behar seem to have? Wow, Todd, I, I, I get such a kick out of Democrats like Joy Behar, right? And remember, she is a member of ABC News. The View is actually an ABC News show. It's not even considered entertainment or something else like fiction. Uh, they, they'll scream about protecting democracy from Donald Trump. And then we'll also scream that Robert F. Kennedy absolutely should not be on the ballot as far as a presidential choice for millions of voters out there who will vote for Robert F. Kennedy Jr. He is the first candidate to be polling in the double digits, Todd and Carly, since Ross Perot more than 30 years ago. So on one hand, Joy Behar, ironically named Joy, by the way, will scream about protecting democracy. And on the other hand, altogether, will say that, well, on the other hand, he shouldn't be running for president and he must be taken off ballots because he is a threat to democracy because he says that Donald Trump is a less threat to democracy than Joe Biden. <laughs> and he cites very good reasons, by the way, as far as Biden and censorship and not giving him Secret Service protection and so on. So uh, th this is The View, the most toxic, worst show on television right now, and it ain't even close, Carly. Yeah, you know, the thing about this, too, is that no one no one is talking about the threat to democracy outside of people on the news. There's parents, families, they're not <laughs> talking about it. So when do the TV people catch up with the regular people and stop talking about it? Leave TV, right? Get out of the bubble, that safe space that is uh, Manhattan and the West Side, or out of Washington, D.C., uh, two places where everybody just talking to each other, and they're not talking to voters in Wisconsin and Michigan like Donald Trump did yesterday, or Pennsylvania, or Georgia, or Arizona, or Nevada. That's what happened in 2016. Everybody was so shocked by the outcome because they said, well, no one saw this coming. No, plenty of people saw it coming, starting with Michael Moore of all people who in Michigan a couple days before the election said he thought that Donald Trump could win based on his conversations with actual people on the ground. So that's where we're at at this point. Uh, get out of your safe space and talk to people instead of each other if you want to know what's really happening in the country where Donald Trump is the odds on favor to win right now when you look at poll after poll, particularly in the swing states like we talked about, guys. Not once when I'm checking out at Stop and Shop, when I get to the end of the line, when my bill comes up, has anybody ever said, oh my God, democracy? Usually it's, oh my God, look how expensive everything is. Speaking of yeah. numbers, Joe, the Iowa LSU game just became the most watched women's basketball game ever with a whopping 12.3 million viewers. Put that in a little context. The game had more viewers than the NBA Finals games, many of them, the World Series, Final game, several mm. college football championship games in 2023, and Thursday night football. What should we take away from those numbers, Joe? I'm going to take away that Caitlin Clark is a generational talent, one that made people watch like my wife, my daughter, my son. We gathered around the television at 7 o'clock Eastern time on Monday night to watch Caitlin Clark, who is the best shooter that you will see outside of Steph Curry, I suppose, uh, and just is a magical type of player. Now, the only regret is the fact that the, when Caitlin plays again on Monday night against UConn in the Final Four, I'm sorry, on Friday night, that's going to be a 9.30 p.m. <sighs> Eastern time game. And for my 10-year-old daughter, eight-year-old son, uh, that's past our bedtime, at least in the Concha House. So you, you wish that at least that game somehow could be earlier on the East Coast, but these are scheduled many, many months uh, beforehand. Either way, women's sports is getting huge, yeah. right? When you think about the Women's World Cup, when you think about the women's uh, basketball, uh, overall, it's great to see now 
all genders are being embraced by people that used to just watch men. Now they realize that women, they could do this thing too. And Carly, uh, once you have your, your triplets, your three daughters in your next pregnancy, oh, you, you will see how big girls sports is at this point, uh, at least for 10 year olds, as far as I'm learning, where we went to San Diego last year just to watch my daughter play soccer when she was nine years old. No, uh, that's I, how competitive totally. it's I think money. it's I think this is fantastic. I remember being inspired by the 1996 uh, Olympic gymnast, the Magnificent Seven, and it was yeah. such a positive right. influence on my life. And now you think about all like what girls are going through right now, all the negative influences to look up to these college players and say, I want to be like them is a really good thing. Joe, we got leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.